how do you counterbalance that with putting a lot of print on it? Yeah, yeah. Great, and great points, and we'll, we can talk about both of those. One, if we want to talk about the retail one, we can do so just towards the very end. And the other point about covering up is, is a really valid point. Because the beauty of packaged food is they don't have that issue, right? They have nothing to show, so every, every centimeter can occupy. I guess what I'm aiming for is what I would call category evolution versus revolution. So at the moment, if we think this is good, then let's go one step better and see if we can do a little bit more with the opportunity that presents itself to sell me a snack box fruit solution. So I appreciate that in some product lines, we still have to have quite a degree of open space around the bag. But I think in other product lines, we can probably do a little bit more, push the boundary a little bit further. The only other point, the second point I'd like to add to that, which to me was, I think, you know, if you haven't had a chance to look at the PMAs, um, I'm not sure exactly when this one came out, but it was one that I received. It's the Consumer Trends document. We really have to be cognizant that the demographic makeup of the shopper now is changing significantly. And to some degree, we are straddling probably three, if not four, fairly significant individual demographic groups that I think buy our products quite differently. So in here, we know we have baby boomers, right? Those born prior to 1964 who are starting to make up our older seniors and couples population. We have Generation X mums, right? Hallelujah, I just snuck in. <laughs> Whew, that made me feel so good. 1965 to 1979. And we know a little bit about what they think about fruits and vegetables and the role in the diet. We also now have the Generation Y mums, right? So those are 1980 to 1990, and the research tells us they actually think quite differently than Generation X and where they get their information from and potentially what they want to see in terms of produce in the bag could potentially be changing. The fourth dynamic to add into the mix, of course, is men, right? So we have four quite distinctive demographic groups. So fully get what you're saying, and I think as the fresh industry, we need to be cognizant of the fact that seeing our products critically important, so we'll never go to 100% coverage, but surely we can find a way to evolve our strategies to do a better job within the space constraints that we have to do a more effective message. So if you're happy, I'm gonna take some more questions at the end, but we might just keep moving so I know that we can get through everything. So if you're interested in changing, what do we need to do? Well, I think the, the process is actually incredibly simple. You need to actually start seeing your fresh produce packaging as a consumer marketing opportunity. It is your in-store mini billboard. And on that pack, you have the potential to communicate specific information to a specific segment of shoppers as part of the goal of driving sales and substitution. And as the pair story showed, even I think dollar value. And it's really a matter of starting to say, yep, we buy into this message. We want to effectively do more with this space. Then what happens as a result is we start to walk through a process. One last point, and I'm gonna make sure I keep up with my slides here. We have to be thinking a little bit about financially making our packaging investment work harder also makes financial sense because if you're out there spending 10 or 15, I mean, sorry, the number of times I've come in after a grower has already spent $15,000 on basically a bag, it was a little bit better than this, but not much, and that $15,000 was spent without any thought at all to who the target audience was, what the consumer, you know, why the consumer buys the product, what the motivation is, what, it, what roles it play in the diet. The number of times I've walked in to start a branding project after that money's already been spent and we're now in resurrect mode is far too often than I even care to think about. But hopefully what I want you to see is that optimizing your packaging actually makes sense from a bottom line point of view. It moves it from being just a straight cost, and this isn't a debate about where it sits on the balance sheet or the income statement, but it does move it mentally from being seen as a cost to actually being seen as a marketing expenditure. And the moment to me that you put something into marketing expenditure, then there's a certain amount of responsibility that goes into making the decisions around that expenditure. And it goes back a little bit to the point I made at the beginning, is you would never consider spending $25,000 on a billboard to simply throw up a barcode and a grower's name. 
but yet we do that all the time on our packaging. So by making that first mental shift and seeing it as an investment, I think that there's opportunities for us to rethink about how we look at the packaging. I also think it's really important that we contemplate what our branding strategy is about. And I know in fresh produce often our branding strategies have historic precedence, right? A brand has been usually a family name or a farm name or a grower name or a company name that's been passed down multiple generations. And there's value in that brand from the brand owner's point of view. But most produce brands that I see and that I get the chance to work with to make them different have almost no value from the shopper point of view. And that goes back a little bit to where's the competitive threat. These are just some, I mean this is by no means all of the photos, these are just some of the photos that I've been really motivated and inspired by in regards to what's happening within grocery packaged food packaging. So I mean that the power of fruit, that should have been ours. Right? That shouldn't be sitting on some frozen fruit bar. The power of fruit should be a fresh produce brand. But the opportunity is now gone to packaged food. The one in the middle, food should taste good. I think that's a fantastic brand. I mean, from a shopper's point of view, that brand speaks to me and says, there's a certain perception of trust and quality that I can come to expect with this product when I buy it. Why? Because the company is telling me as part of their brand strategy that food should taste good. So I have the expectation that it will before I've even opened the bag and tried the product. Really, really clever savvy marketing. This one here is an organic baby food line in America. Happy baby! What about an avocado brand or package those processed avocado products that have now come out that sits in a chilled section away from produce called Happy Baby Avocado Baby Food? Maybe there's opportunity there. The moment you start to think a bit differently and you start to see what packaged foods are doing, hopefully it tweaks the creative process. I mean, I know for me, it used to, I'm a bit of a supermarket voyeur. Anybody else guilty of that? Where you actually go and you just kind of stand in the aisles and going, wow, look at that. And they talk about the fact that most people hate shopping. I love it. I love it. Because it means that I can kind of wander down these aisles and go, oh, God, look at that packaging and look what they've done with that brand. Isn't that fantastic? But I just find these days I spend most of my time in the supermarket aisles, in the grocery aisles, where I used to spend almost all my time in produce looking for trends and opportunities. Anymore I'm in grocery because that's the cutting edge of, I think, where brand and pa package messaging tech innovation is happening. And you can see it, of course, contrasted on this side. You know, again, here's kind of what we put out to compete in that very crowded space where the marketers are incredibly sophisticated. That's what we put out. I think we might need to want to start to think about the opportunity and power tied up, not only in our packaging and our unpacked message, but also in the value of our brand. And I've got quite a controversial statement to make, but I'll make it to you offline and private if you're interested. Okay, finally. The reality is, is what I like about competing with grocery, like from a marketer's point of view, it kind of revs me up because I think oh, I'm going to get one on them, is two things. Number one, we're all operating basically with the same amount of space. And granted, we have a bit more clear space that we have to deal with because people expect to see our products. But you know, when you kind of drill it down and probably measure it out, to some degree, we're actually working with a lot of room. No more, no less significantly than what they have. The difference is they see the opportunity and they do far more with theirs than what we do. Okay, so that's one of the things that excites me. The second thing is we all know in produce, we don't have any money. We can't do big, above the line, advertising, PR, promotions. We just, we just can't afford it. But where our costs are similar is in packaging. So it's kind of like we can stick one to them, if I can use those words, to a very minor degree, because those are the two areas where we can compete with packaged foods. OK, so you're interested. You want to do something about it. What needs to happen? First of all, on your packaging, here's the five golden rules that I follow. Talk to someone and say something. And I've brought some samples with me, so a couple I'll just share with you quickly. This is man's yogurt. Talk about men, men in aprons. This is man's yogurt, right? Boys, as it tells me on the side, made for men by men. Seriously, it was made by a bloke named Brian. That's the power of the on pack message, right? What does it say on the front? This is men's yogurt. Are you in any doubt that this is men's yogurt? 
No, we're perfectly clear. And you are a man. Now find a spoon, a fork, or a spade and dig in. Isn't that fun? Why can't packaging, why can't our fresh produce packaging be fun? Right? We own health, wellness, nutrition, and yet we market it in very quite boring, very almost finger pointy ways. Okay? The other one that I wanted to share with you about talk to someone and say something, this is great. This is a water that you tell me, I'll, I'll read the back to you if I can see it, and you tell me who it's targeting, right? Very, very specific niche. The water brand is called Function Urban Detox. You are a city warrior. You jog in the smog and party on work nights. As a result of your noble escapades, you are easily run down. Function Urban Detox helps your body naturally repair, getting you ready to go back into battle. Who are you? What's your age? Mid-20s? Mid-20s? 20, 25 to 35 probably, right? Yeah, that independent single out of the home. Mom and dad can't tell me what to do. I can party all night and I can still get up and be fresh in the morning and I drink Function Urban Detox, right? Market to someone, talk to someone and say something, right? Define a target audience and talk to them. We have to face the fact that in some of our product lines, we have a high, generally quite a high penetration, but we will have a group of consumers who buy us more than others. Can we start to think about messages that have specific appeal, that actually target someone and say something? This goes back to the topic of trends. We've got to know the trends and use them. So what's hot at the moment that we could take advantage of? Well, if you type in the top 10 nutrition Food, Nutrition, and Health Trends for 2010, because you have to pay to buy the 2011 report, but the ones for 2010 are actively available online. What are some of the trends that we, can, we could take advantage of in fresh produce tomorrow if we had a brainstorming session? Digestive health, right? We all eat broccoli, we know what it does to you. It's great for your body, it's great for your digestive health. Why don't we talk at all about digestive health on broccoli packaging? It's what the consumer wants to hear, right? Trends give us what the consumer wants to hear about our product in their language. Digestive health, feel the benefit. Oh, I like that statement, feel the benefit. Why do we not have feel the benefit somewhere on a package? Feel the benefit of eating apples. Feel the benefit of a juicy orange. Do you kind of get a mental picture that's pretty compelling? We don't tend to use any kind of that language. Weight management, antioxidants, bones and movement. What are the high calcium fruits and vegetables? I think broccoli is one of them. I have a thing for broccoli. You can ask me the story later. Um, what's a high calcium vegetable? Why don't we talk about, within the legal boundaries, why don't we talk about calcium on a broccoli pack? Tie it, talk about a trend, tie it in, and suddenly your packaging has an opportunity to have more credence and credibility than it would have if you just tried to create a core message and stand alone. The Min and Apron ones is another important one. We're seeing significant products being launched around targeting men. Do we need to have a big man's tomato? Poss possibly, I think we should. I mean, in some degree, your, your non-juicy sa sandwich tomatoes, right, to some degree fill that space potentially, I don't know, maybe a non-juicy tomato rather than just being a non-juicy tomato should be a man's tomato. 33% of men are now shopping for groceries. Are we appealing to them specifically at all in fruits and vegetables? It's a trend that we probably shouldn't be missing out on. The thing that I like about spending time in the grocery aisles, if the big boys with lots of money and really smart people are doing it, we should probably be doing it too. Okay? Right. Uh, so health, we also know provenance and local is another big trend at the moment. I mean, again, here's the big boys talking about Wadi's New Zealand, pick of the crop, Hawks Bay peaches, Hawks Bay baby beetroot, Puhoi Valley, divine berries from Nelson Bays. That's provenance and local in action, manifested on their packaging because they realize it's a trend worth paying attention to. So mine the trends and you'll find opportunities. Step three, inform and inspire. This is just, I think, so important. And you know, it, it ties very much into all the trends that we've been talk, 